Women, and increasingly men, are becoming more and more preoccupied with their weight. Just before this show, I want you to know, I asked this audience, I don't care what size you are, how many of you, once a day or maybe twice a minute, think about your weight and clap to show how many people raise their hands. Just about everybody in this audience. And we're talking about people of all different shapes and sizes. So this has become a national obsession, weight has. While many of us are growing heavier, our body preferences, the bodies we tend to like, are growing thinner. I was just talking to some ladies backstage who are plump and beautiful, and they say, you know something? I'm happy being this way. But on today's show, they're going to get a little conflict because you're going to meet a woman who says that overweight women who say that they're proud of being overweight are only fooling themselves. It's a miserable life. People don't accept you. Being overweight is very difficult. And being thinner now, I can say that I represent both sides. We're also going to hear from a man who believes there is absolutely nothing wrong with eating as much fat as you want. Before you go on another yo-yo diet, which will only guarantee so yeah, that you will be fatter in the long run, before you do that, diet. See, see how much fat you would eat if you could eat all the fat that you wanted. Would right. you never eat a salad? Would you never eat a vegetable if you could eat all the fat that you oh, wanted to eat? Oh, man, I'd be in heaven. Happily? But first, I want you to please welcome plus-size model Emmy, who is the author of a book entitled True Beauty. And she says we all have to stop dieting as a nation. And also Weight Watchers graduate Kathy J Zajaskowski is joining us. Kathy, nice to have you. Kathy lost 150 pounds in the past three years. She says she was miserable being fat. You have been on our show before, and it is hard to believe that you used to have 150 pounds attached to you. You say what when it comes to weight and as we talk about this obsession that our nation has? Well, I think more than an, an obsession with dieting, it should be uh, healthy eating, more geared towards healthy eating because overweight is not good for our health, and I feel uh, being overweight in the past and now that I'm, I'm thinner, it's much better being thinner than being overweight. Didn't you think, though, that there was a certain point there's some people that are overweight, quote-unquote overweight, that might be off the charts but still work out and still get fit and still go out and be very athletic and can be more um, fit than someone who's a lackadaisical, very lazy size 8? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's not just about dieting. It's not just about that. It's about healthy eating, being fit, taking care of yourself. Now, Amy, you take great pride in being part of the plus models. Absolutely. Why? Tell me why it's so important that we have a plus model. I think that we as a nation really need to have a certain image that is represented in the media, in billboards and movies and everything that you see in magazines of a variety of images. Instead of it just being very small and ectomorphic, very thin, we need to have endomorphs and who are rounded, people who are mesomorphs, who are very strong, very big build, and so that all the people in our society don't feel that they're inadequate. Well, what do you say to people who say all oh, those plus models, they're just a bunch of overweight women trying to, to, trying to make that okay with everything? I think that's a bunch of pooey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just think that, you know, I think we have to really stop being so obsessive with every single diet that comes out making us feel that if we have 10 pounds to lose that it's the most important thing of our lives there's so much to life mm -hmm. that can be involved in, in but you're not saying family. that Kathy should have left on that 150 pounds she no, had as if you've taken it off for a long you know long period of time and you did it in a very healthy way and you weren't obsessive about it um, and you learned a new way to eat and that you don't feel that you're being pinned in a box because if you go off the diet oh my gosh, what am I going to do? That's the whole thing of dieting that I don't agree with, is because it's a lifestyle change, not just another diet. That, like well, so many true. people say, look at the first three letters of the word diet. What does it spell? Hard. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know that it's such a, a deprivation to us. Do you, what, let me, your life has changed having lost it's that totally. weight. Do you, do you? I mean, I was heavy my entire life since I was a kid. It's a miserable life. People don't accept you. Being overweight is very difficult. And being thinner now, I can say that I represent both sides. Now that's She lives a, a, a beautiful life. She's a model. I mean, I... But look at you. You're up. beautiful, yeah. Kathy. Even, yeah. when, even when you were overweight with that gorgeous face that you have, people still discriminated against you? Yes, I was made fun and called names my entire life. And those scars don't go away. 
but you know, reaching, facing the age of 40, I have four children, and I'm a registered nurse. I, you know, healthcare field. I know, you know, that being overweight is not healthy, and uh, I want to, I want to grow old and see my kids grow old. And and I felt that I wasn't living a healthy life, so I made lifestyle changes. Great. Um, being overweight was was unhappy for me. This is much better. How much does, better. How's your self-esteem too? Because I talk to people Can't when compare. they're very, but did you have to work on your self-esteem at the point where you're at before you lost the weight? Or are you working on that now, gaining it because you've lost weight? Because I think you're the same person as you were 100 pounds more that, as you are now. It's you're a the continuous same growing process. And that's why uh, I, I promote this. I have a group that meets in Great Neck for self-esteem and weight loss therapy. Uh, I feel it's, it's absolutely um, a must because you have to learn why you're overweight and then you can when you find out what it is that makes you eat or whatever it is that that uh, is in your past mm -hmm. then you can make that connection and when you make that connection you can avoid those pitfalls again you know, and, right. and it also improves your self-esteem right. it's I mean, kind of like what we were talking about backstage we were saying that it's not only how we treat ourselves that that, that keeps us loving ourselves but how we think about ourselves sure. too. When we come back, we're going to talk to a guy by the name of Richard Klein and a lady by the name of Joyce Vedrill. Richard says that he, he's inspiring all of us folks to eat all the fat we want because diets, he say, just do not work. Now, Joyce is going to come out here and disagree totally because she says it is possible to lose weight and keep it off and take care of yourself all at the same time. Boy, are we going to have a battle with weight today. Stay with us and find out what, we, what happens during this hour. We'll be right back in a minute. Diets don't work, you know. 95% of all people Fail. who go on diets put back the weight they've lost within four to five years, usually in spades. Another wedding. How are we going to squeeze into the bridesmaids' dresses this time? What about that home liposuction kit you hook up to your car? Well, that's an option. Or the mail order tapeworms? Too slow. The tapeworms? No, the mail. Or we could just stop eating. Stop eating? Why do something crazy? When it comes to weight loss, no one has more success stories than Weight Watchers. You know, there's my butt in that commercial. <laughs> Yeah, when I first saw that for Weight Watchers, I could identify with that. I think that woman thing, you know, as, as they used to say in college, Ro, you're not fat F-A-T, you're P-H-A-T. Plenty of hips and thighs. <laughs> oh. But anyway, where the, where, however you look at it, the, we all look at our weight one way or the other. Some say it's not a big deal. Some say it is a big deal. We've been talking to plus-size model Emmy, who says she's very content weighing at 190 pounds. And we've also been talking to Kathy, who says she hopes she never weighs again the one Gosh, you only 150 pounds heavier at one time, and she says she never wants to go back there. I want you to now, let me introduce to you some other folks we're bringing in the conversation. Joyce Vidral is author of Eat to Trim, and Richard Klein is author of Eat Fat. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, this is going to be a true rumble, because Joyce believes that you can lose weight, you can eat healthy, you can trim, be trim and stay trim, and Richard says, forget about it. Order the pork chop and the barbecue sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, you do say eat fat, though. I might be exaggerating a bit. Go for it, you guys. I want to hear a conversation between the two of you that's going to let me understand what your ideas are. Joyce, start. Okay, I'll say one thing. Even when I wrote Eat to Trim, I found that I was obsessing and keeping my fat too low. If you keep your fat too low, less than 10% of your daily calories, you're going to be hungry all the time. So I actually had to add fat to my recipes. And I found that at the end of the day, I wasn't starving. So it is true that we want to eat some fat. However, if you have an organized weight plan that's balanced, the big key is balance. Don't be fooled. You cannot fool Mother Nature. All <laughs> these things out there, high protein this, high carb that, grapefruit and eggs, forget about it. It's a balance and it's filling your stomach with enough food so you don't feel like you're starving. The stomach only holds two pounds of food at a time. 
As you all know who know me, I come from a Russian family. We like to eat. We don't want to stop until we can't move. So there are days when I will be eating those extra free foods. Four like, pounds of food. Yeah, I'll stuff my... When I finish my five meals a day, which I'm allowed, I will then eat huge bowls of broccoli, cauliflower, green peppers. It sounds like nothing, but at least I don't have to go to bed early thinking, gee, I've used up my food allotments. Now, See? Richard's over there frowning. Richard, that big plate of broccoli didn't sound good to you. Is the fat man did it. Right. Well, I mean, in the first place... <laughs> I'm with you, Richard. I'm going to get in shape before I finish, too. Okay, let's hear Richard's I mean, why, why do you have to choose? I mean, why can't we be fat and be thin and be any sort of weight that we want? I be mean, ourselves. I be agree. Ourselves. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, wait, wait. Hold the phone. Wait, wait, wait. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Be Hold the, the phone. best <laughs> that you can be. Joyce says, talk to wait. the hand. All right. Talk my to turn, the hand. My turn, my turn. You were out here the first segment. Let me just say Joyce, this. I'm going to let you talk, and then Emmy, I want to hear from you. Joyce first. Go. Okay, here's what I'm saying. Of course be yourself. In fact, I admire people who could be fat and happy. I love it, but I couldn't do it. I was always making excuses, apologizing, and it was taken away from my creativity and my intelligence. So I figured, let me get in shape, get my weight off me, get it out of the way. Wait a minute, but how was that taken from happy, your creativity and intelligence? The size is bigger, and I, she is beautiful. Wait. God bless her. Wait, wait, wait. I want to stop right there, Joyce, because a lot of people reacted to the weight took from your intelligence. No, no, no. And your creativity. No, yes, yes. Let me explain. Me. I, would, I was an English teacher, Ph.D. in English Lit, in front of my students at NYU and, or and in high school. Right? How much heavier were you? I was 30 pounds heavier. You got a before picture of me. And I, Joyce Vidrell try to analyze and use philosophy. This I even, may I finish? I even right got now. a quote from the Bible Maybe saying, a physical energy profiteth little, and a physical exercise profiteth little. It, the body is not what counts, it's the soul. But I knew that unless I got myself in shape so I could forget about food, forget about diet, and do the purpose that God put me here on this earth to do, to teach and to be, you know, an inspiring person. You had to get person. yourself together first. I what had you said. to do it, and so I found a way to do it. Emmy, do you think she's a bit obsessive if on that? If you're happy, God bless you, though. I'm not against I think that. I agree with you. When weight is an issue, when yeah. weight is an issue is when we starve ourselves. Yes. Weight is an issue when we purge ourselves. Oh. Weight is an issue is right. because when obesity starts having diabetes, diabetes problems. That's when I agree with that's issue. 100 from the audience. How, yeah. However, I think that we've got to really, as I, I do agree with. Yeah, we're not saying, arguing with each is other. Is that it's balance. Balance. And that we as people are endomorphs, ectomorphs, and mesomorphs. We come in all different shapes, shapes and sizes. What do you say here in the audience? I agree with um, the lady in the beige suit yeah. that. We need to all be different. If the world was all the same people, then it would be boring. And I think that thinking that 30 pounds is like taking away from your creativity and your intelligence is like ridiculous. But it does help. Okay, I, I want to answer that. Okay, now look, let me explain something to you. I do not think it should take away from anybody's creativity or intelligence or feeling of using their intelligence where it should be used instead of wasting time thinking about dieting. However, Everyone out there in the audience should ask themselves, is this 30 pounds uh, uh, draining my energy? If it is, I have the answer for you. Well, because let me I would see there. if our next That's guest is going. I'm saying I to you. Find, I'm going to let you continue here, but I want to find out if our next guest ever was obsessed over weight loss because she's proud of who she is today. She is Miss Plus USA. And she reveals why she believes all women who are trying to fit into a size 10 dress have a distorted sense of themselves and their self esteem. What does it mean to her to be beautiful? We'll talk to her right after this. I think we're too caught up in the, the physical type of aspects. What is important is that we have to be accepting of ourselves. I have to look in the mirror and I like Vanessa, mm -hmm. the way Vanessa is. Mm -hmm. And I think that once we're accepting of ourselves, then that is what is important. We've got the scoop on your favorite stars before they hit it big, like Brad Pitt. He dressed up like a chicken, and he also drove strippers around to bachelor parties. Before they were famous on Rolanda. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the Rolanda show. Please leave your comments, and if you like this episode, hit the like button. If you want to know when the next episode is going to drop, hit the subscribe button. But stay in touch and follow me in social media at Rolanda Watts. That's R O L O N D A at Rolanda Watts. And go and check out my website at Rolanda.com. R O L O. -N -D -A 
NDA.com. Now, if you're going to be in the New York area and would like free tickets to Rolanda, well, please call us. Before we bring out a lady who says she is proud to be a plus, Miss Plus USA. I, uh, Richard, you were burning to say something now. Not burning fat, but burning to say something. <laughs> I think we've come to a crisis in this country. I mean, the latest government statistics show that uh, over 50% of Americans now are obese. And at the same time, we have a $40 billion diet industry in this uh, country, not to mention the fitness business or the new, the new generation of uh, diet drugs. And yet diets don't work. You know, 95% of all people Fail. who go on diets put back the weight they've lost within four to five years, usually in spades. Do you think yeah, that, that, that all this dieting are? talk and this big billion dollar business in dieting may be promoting obesity uh, in a way? I, I think uh, uh, you have to draw that conclusion. Americans are the fattest people in the world and we're getting fatter faster. And at the same time, <laughs> uh, I mean, our our ideal, uh, our ideal of beauty is getting thinner and thinner. So what you're saying is forget the diets and eat all the fat you want and just be happy. Well, is that I'm what you're saying? saying? Try, try this for six Balance. weeks. Just try this diet. Before you go on another yo-yo diet, which will only guarantee yeah, that you will be fatter and thinner. Before you do that, see, see how much fat you would eat if you could eat all the fat that you wanted. Would you right. never eat a salad? Would you never eat a vegetable if you could eat all the fat that you oh, wanted to eat? Oh, man, I'd if be you in ate heaven. Happily. But then if you stopped a component Impulsively obsessing about what you put in your mouth. If you stopped feeling shame and guilt about what you ate, there's right. a, there's a real chance that you might lose weight. People I will admit that after I really pig binging. out, like on a weekend or vacation, then I can get back down to dieting because I haven't deprived myself of anything. Then I can see how do you do it? Hi. Hey. Um, I just wanted to say, Emmy, you look good. 190 pounds looks nice on sure you. Sure does. Yeah. Hey. And I also wanted to say that um, I thought I was dieting, and I gained more weight when I was dieting. And I agreed with Richard, eat what you want, just control how much of it you eat. Balance. And you will not get um, fat, overweight. And if you're big and you like being big, stay big. Well, let me tell you something. I mean, one lady who like was big, big one lady who was big said, I'm going to show the whole nation I'm going to be That's proud right. of it. In fact, she became from Mobile, Alabama, Miss Plus USA, 1997. Vanessa Murphy, everybody. Beautiful. I, Vanessa, I've got to ask you this. Many things happen in your life that make you say, doggone it, I'm going to take a step now. What was it that happened in your life that made you desire to be Miss Plus USA? Well, um, basically because I found out that I'm going to be a plus size female because my family, there's lots of plus size females in my family and I liked myself the way I was. And I thought that this pageant that has been going on for about 13 years that was started by Dolores is in the audience. I thought that it was such a wonderful thing that I could participate in because I couldn't participate in other pageants because of my size. So it brought a lot of positive things to myself. And I just, I just accept myself for who I am. I really like it. Beautiful. We're going to talk more with you and also the lady behind these pageants and a lot more. Also up next, find out if our panel says that Miss Universe, now we remember that big story about Miss Universe gaining all that weight. Well, should she be required to lose the weight that she gained, some 50 pounds, in order to wear her crown? I want to know what you say no. Oh, we'll be right back in a minute. Boy, you don't think so, huh? Absolutely I feel not. she didn't win the pageant at 170 pounds. I think she's beautiful, but she would not have won if she weighed 170 pounds. Why did your parents miss your wedding? Was it because you didn't want them there, or did they refuse to come? Call us at 1-900-9-ROJO or send email to rojo at aol.com. A lot of us were really surprised when we discovered that Miss Universe 1996, Alicia Mikado, had gained too much weight during her reign. Apparently, she gained some 50 pounds since she was crowned. And Donald Trump, the owner of the Miss Universe pageant, praised her for doing more for people with weight problems than anything else he had seen in years. Apparently, she went from 118 pounds to 170 pounds after winning the title. And Trump has put her on a diet and this big exercise regime, and she's apparently losing all the weight 
that you recently gained. The question that I asked my audience here today was, and I want to hear with a show of hands, tell the audience out there what you voted here, how many people say that she should definitely have to be able to lose that weight? No question. Let's hear. How many people say that's ridiculous? She shouldn't be made to lose the weight. She looked great, you know, and just to see that kind of figure is incredible. And for Donald Trump to walk in there and say, you know, with almost like, okay, you've got to lose weight, you've got to lose weight, I felt like it was a publicity thing mm -hmm. that he wanted to try and bring to the pageant, yeah. which really was sad because she had curves that were, like, gorgeous. She's a woman. Yeah. You were watching that Miss Plus USA, pageant to pageant, queen to queen. What were you thinking? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing as Emmy saying. It was utterly ridiculous. She's beautiful either way she is. And um, just because she gains a few pounds doesn't mean that she needs to lose her title or needs to lose weight. I think we, that situation got caught up into that stereotype and that distorted view that we have to be small to be beautiful. What do you think? I just feel she didn't win the pageant at 170 pounds. I think she's beautiful, but she would not have won if she weighed 170 That's pounds. That's true, but you know... There you go. You know, uh, Marilyn, Monroe, Marilyn, Monroe used to, uh, Marilyn Monroe used to exaggerate the width of her hips because she didn't think that she was voluptuous, no, uh, right. uh, voluptuous enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, that wasn't so long ago that Marilyn Monroe thought that uh, it was sort of great to have uh, Sure, uh, but, have she, but Marilyn, Marilyn didn't have, have a roll person. of fat around her stomach, don't you see? But yeah. neither so she, she worked out with weights, by the way. Oh. No, I'm just saying, so if you got lucky enough to get fat in all the right places, good. Right, what but do you say, don't, like, look, I, well, I say that, uh, I think it has nothing to do with uh, how we look. I think we're too caught up in the, the physical type of aspects. What is important is that we have to be accepting of ourselves. I have to look in the mirror and I like Vanessa, mm -hmm. the way Vanessa is. Mm -hmm. And I think that Inter once we're accepting of ourselves, then that is what is important. Now, as far as Miss Universe, she probably was, I don't really know her, but she probably was accepting of herself, but she got caught up in that stereotype and those fat labels that we're trying to get away from. I think that it's okay for you to do what you want to do as long as you're doing it for yourself, Self. not because not society some or some man tells you that you have to look a certain way. What do you say? I think that Donald Trump saying that was sort of like a public punishment of anyone who was overweight, and that's a really large message you're sending, and it's just totally ridiculous. And maybe ridiculous, but he, he gave her a message that goes out right. all the time. That's what we're but all that doesn't change. make it positive. But wait, you know, but he also gave her an opportunity to get in shape, not as a punishment, but he gave her a healthy diet Publicly and a workout. And, and apparently, apparently that's a she has helped other people. Because let's look at the you know positive side of it. If if we eat healthy and we go on a healthy diet, it's the word diet really means what we eat on a daily basis. Stop thinking of it as diet. I like well, every connotation of diet. Right, is everybody not is on a diet, meaning you eat food. So you might as well eat balanced food. And then if Absolutely. you don't want to be overweight, then you keep it to a limit. And once you reach your goal, you could eat, eat something a little bit extra every day or once a week. You don't have to ever give up anything permanently. What Good. do you say? Well, first of all, this is my first time here, and I just wanted to say you're even more lovely in person. Oh, too sweet. Thank you. Second of all. And you wouldn't even care if I gained weight? No, I would not. Thank you. You Go are on. just <laughs> too beautiful. It doesn't even matter. Thanks. Second thing is, as long as you're happy, it shouldn't hey. matter what you look like. I mean, you look That's beautiful right, right here. You. you look, and you're totally, you are a queen. Thank you. Like Thank this. You. And these lovely it's young so ladies fun. down here as well. As long as you are happy, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. It's the perception of beauty, I think, that mm -hmm. we need to start looking at. Exactly. And for, you know, manufacturers, Rolanda, one thing, very interestingly enough, is that plus-size women have not been able to buy clothes, mm -hmm. not been able to buy lingerie, which mm. is very interesting that Playtex is coming out with a full-figured line of body language lingerie yeah. that matches. Mm -hmm. I mean, and beautiful and sexy. How could you ever imagine that? I see more women in here going, when you said that matches, women went, mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, definitely. It's, you would think that we're going into the millennium mm -hmm. and there would be right. things that would be able that we would be able to wear with pride that you could wear during the day and at night uh -huh. and you know not feel badly about it. What do you say? Uh, I'm a psychoanalyst and I do a lot of work with body image and I think that it's such a destructive message to women that there's only one right way to look. We had a whole historical thing in this country where we're told everybody should look white and we decided the solution wasn't everybody should look white, but black is beautiful and yellow is beautiful and this diversity is what's really beautiful and there's a whole 
the, every different weight has a beauty of its own and there's no one right way to be. And you can feel really good about yourself when you stop trying to put yourself into a box mm -hmm. and say, hey, I like who I am. I, I like, like what you said. You stick around. We may need a little psychoanalysis later. Coming up next, we're going to talk to some plus size women and find out how their size affects their relationships. And we're going to talk to some guys who say, honey, the more you got, the better it feels. Right? We'll be right back. <laughs> Look at that, another big discrepancy between men and women. 89%, that's a big difference. I want you to welcome Chiffon, Amy, and Kimberly to the show. These three women all could see us. Hey, you're Amy. <laughs> now, these three women all consider themselves plus size women, and are you proud of it? Absolutely. I'm yes. very proud of it. I did want to step back a little bit and take issue okay. with what was said about the Miss Universe pageant and what Donald Trump had to say. Are we so shallow? in these United States that we're going to judge a person's worth by the size of their body, I don't think it really should be that way. That's mm -hmm. pitiful. Absolutely. That says a lot about us as individuals. The total pageant was not based on her Ella outward appearance right. only. It was based on her talent, her personality. So all of those things, I mean, does that override everything but just Amy, because you of know, your size? But Amy, you know if she had walked down that runway 170 pounds, everybody no, sitting at home watching the TV would have been mm -hmm. talking about that's her. Maybe right, right, and that's what needs to be corrected is the brainwashing that has been done mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. the that's media exactly. that says we should all be about this big. Let me tell you something. I started out as a very small well, I say woman. At the time, I was a girl. I started out size three. I was terribly unhappy. I was size three. I was very, very thin. I was a model, and I had all the things that most people say you should have, but I was unhappy. I didn't like those bones sticking out in those places where they were sticking out. <laughs> and it was a, a while hard. before I started to grow, and my body changed after I began having children. And as a result, I am so happy now with the way that I am. I wouldn't change it for anything. And I don't what, ever want to go back. And what about the relationship side of it? Oh, How did a girl tell me now? <laughs> tell me, I want to know. No, really. You know, because I, let's face it, a lot of women are concerned about their bodies because they're thinking about those men folks. And yes. I want to know how does it, go on, tell me. Well, let me tell you what, there's more of me for my husband to love. All right. <laughs> Single, both of you are uh, very happily married. Very happily uh -huh. married. See, and did, did your husband's not said. saying, you know, lose weight, watch it all. <laughs> I was a size six when no, uh, Brad and I got married, good. and now I'm a size 18. Mm -hmm. I'm not shy. I will tell you what my size is. Now, a lot of women me. will not. Do. I have girlfriends who won't buy a 12 if they fit into it. You know, and I know that's not right. Yeah. Well, you but know you what? Can't I'll give you a little treat today. My husband is with me today. Where He's is in the he? audience. He's right here. And you can ask firsthand about Come an individual on up, who's married to a plus size woman. <laughs> Come on over here, hubby. Hey, hubby. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? My name is WT WT. Well, what do you think? You're not nagging your wife about weight problems. You know, what are you, what are you thinking? Well, you know, I married my wife when she was size 12. <clears throat> and uh, she's been size 12, size 14, size 16, time, size 18, times 16, size 14. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all been married and a long, a long time. time. Right. Yes. <laughs> and uh, never have I uh, nagged her about her weight. I loved her when she was size 12. I love her now. Yeah. And I love her when she's size 12. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful couple you are. Thank you. Tell me about the single scene, girlfriend. What, what, are, you, what are you finding? You know, it's it's pretty amazing. Um, most guys are, are very open-minded as far as they don't, they're not looking for the perfect size four mm -hmm. in a woman. They look mm -hmm. at a woman as who she is. Mm -hmm. I mean, last week, this is no lie, I got asked out 15 different times by different men, you know, and I'm, right now, I'm single because I choose to be single. Hey, I'm, hey! <laughs> <laughs> but I'm serious. I'm very, very career-oriented. Yeah. I model, I, I sing and write music, and you know, it's it's a wonderful thing, and and when I'm ready to get married, then I will. Yeah. But until then, you know, I'm being who I want to be, and I'm very very happy right. being the size that I am. Thank you all you know, so much. Go on. What? Wanda, I was going to say. I mean, look at Kimberly. She dresses fabulously. Mm. She feels mm. good about herself. I mean, she exudes that confidence. Why are we attracted to each other? Because we want to be, you know, have fun with each other. And 
And you don't want to be around somebody who's negative and just, you know, hanging his head down. Yeah, I'm going to get into the guys of the audience when we come I back and really find out what the guys think. I mean, do yeah, men I look at women's body types? Oh, well, some do, some don't. Is a reality. We'll talk about that. Also up next, the men who say that they love their women big, they're going to reveal why a woman who's a size six just isn't going to do it for them. Maybe it's those bones clanking around that does everything. We'll be back in a minute, everybody. Thank you so much. Eighteen struggling to survive. I tried to commit suicide. I have burns. Can they ever go home again? I just wanted to tell you that I'm sorry. Find out on Rolanda. back here who says she's upset. I'm going to say, what are you upset about back here? Come on, excuse me, guys. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Yes, ma'am. I was just saying all the trouble I went through today to find something to make me look slimmer, y'all got to show it on about weight. I'm, <laughs> 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 I'm hurt. No, no, so what do you, so, so it sounds to me like the last thing you want to talk about is weight. Yeah. That's the very last thing. Why? Because I'm, I'm not comfortable with this weight at all. I am miserable. You know, I mean, I'm happy with myself, but not with the weight. Not, so that's not at the question all. you would throw That's what we're saying. That's why I'm saying I if understand she's not happy, you. I have you, the program because I was just but like you. But you can do it yourself but, inside. All right, can I is. show you something? You can. Wait, you know, Rolanda. No. Oh, no. Now, wait. Who, who, who Let me say something. Wait. Oh, okay. Y'all, you look great. I got to no, say. Wait, wait. I want to make a point. Up until recently, I would be on TV... And I look very good, 12 pounds heavier than this. And I'd be on TV looking, bragging, look at my butt, it's big, but it's high. Joyce, you did that But it was getting too big. big and it's high, but, you know. I know, but it was getting too big. Hello. So what I did, I decided. See? Kathy, Kathy, hold on a second. Kathy, let me get your We are agreeing with each other. Kathy. Let me talk to you because you are 150 pounds heavier and have made a life change. But I can imagine that you felt very much like this lady at some time. And I'm sure that there are lots of people at home who are saying, you know, I got to go out today and I just finished watching the row show. And now I got to think about weight today, too. What do you say? What do you say to women? There like were this? times when I would say, I'm happy. This is the way God made me to be. I just have to accept this. But in reality, you're not really happy, okay? Mm -hmm. You're not I think, really I think happy. What is this but is, I mean, this whole this conversation has been talking. Wait a minute, y'all. This is for me. Think, these things change, you know? I think what is important, like, what years, she's I'm saying sorry. is... I'm sorry. Go, Go on, what she's saying is that What she's saying is that she was, was happy. happy with her... She wasn't happy with herself. What is important is that we have to be happy with ourselves... First. first. And we have to make sure that we're doing something positive for ourselves or we're and losing weight for ourselves for anybody else. because Always we're doing for it for ourselves, yeah. not because society says I have to be a size 6. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a size 16, you can yourself. be 6, 16. But you know, so, Vanessa, I like what you're saying because the challenge really to you, young lady, is you have a host of people who are saying be happy as you are, but what they hear you saying is that you're not happy. She just so the rest she... is up to you. You have exactly. to make a choice she just to find what is you're happy. happy. Wait, no, she's, she's not happy. She's not Wait a minute, Roland. But a lot of this has to come from inside right. out. And I'm not, what I'm saying is it's okay right. if you want to lose weight, right. but make sure you're doing it for the right reason. Right. And we all, don't stand in the mirror right. and say, oh, I don't look don't like kill right. Imam. Right. No, everybody we, can't look like Imam. We don't no. have to make a religion out of the thing. Just mm -hmm. simply follow a healthy eating plan and lose the weight. You what can do it. Joyce, but you can't. It's not as sure for you. One at a time, one at a time from the audience. If the focus is on weight, if that is our focus, Health. we're not going to be happy. Right. Not, right. There's going to be the majority of people aren't going to fit in that social norm ever. So why? Why are, why are we constantly feeling guilty it's for not fitting into too. a social norm that no one... And the social norm changes. Anymore. That's the thing, you know? But we're in this norm right. now, right? Yes.
that's, I mean, the, the social Italy norm yet. changes. I mean, Hello. you know, 90 years ago, Lillian Russell was the most beautiful woman in America, and she was famous for her appetite. Uh, people not only tolerated fat 90 years ago, they celebrated it. They thought it looked healthy. What we you look at fat then? now, uh, and we, we see something that's uh, ugly and sinful mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and unhealthy, but it's that's just because uh, norms and labels change. And we have to be consistent that every single person here has a different body type. We right. cannot be fit into well, a little... that's the reality of exactly. that's the reality. What do you say? I say since 1969, there has been a movement, uh, you know, fat is beautiful movement in this country, and we've been fighting a very hard battle. But I know for myself, since 1969, when I got that message, I've been happy. And they I must lead be a very winning, successful life in every fat. way. No, I think beautiful. you're beautiful. Only... Thank you. I and I feel beautiful. But I think that's wonderful. They must be winning because winning people are getting fat. One at a time, I think Kathy. it's wonderful that you say that. I think basically you've just found a way to accept what you are. You have the ability to make that change, but you've just accepted it. And that's what I've learned from myself. But I think what's important is that sometimes we cannot most change. People, most people put the weight back on when they go on diets. If weight Watchers, diet. everybody I know has failed. True, if it's everybody I know has tried Weight Watchers no. and well, lost weight and then put it back on. And it defense. goes on and on. I want you to they meet Donald on. Kelly and AJ over here. They're all from New York City, and all these men have one thing in common. They all love plus size women. Tell me what's the big difference between a plus like size men. woman and a, and a thin one. Years ago? Oh, a plus size woman is, uh, is sexy. She's feminine. She's plush. She's oh, luscious. Yeah. She's desirable. Everything that thin women have, they have in abundance. Ooh, let's take a commercial. I, like I want to hear more of this. We'll be back in a minute. Oh. She wants to hear more from these guys. Donald Kelly and AJ here, all from New York City, say they love. Well, I'm going to give you what was that list you say you like big women? What oh, you... yeah, they're sexy, feminine, plush, heavenly, desirable, beautiful. There are so many words. There's so many words. Yes, there are. Does it really make a difference? Do you find, though, that when you guys take out a, a, a plus woman, that you, have to, that you have to make her feel extra special? Is there. Yeah. Uh, just, just treat them like they treat you, and everything will go all well. Mm -hmm. Why is it that well. you like more plus women than thin, modely well, type? Uh, I love. I like something to hold on to, the lady back there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I like all women, but I love big women. So Why? I just love them, just like she said, more to hold on to. More to hold on yeah. to. What, what, what? I want to say about the dieting. You know, dieting. Mm -hmm. I tried two diets. I tried the Dick Gregory diet. And I tried the Hershey Milk diet, and I love the way I am. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wrote a little. Uh, hello, I wrote a little poem okay. about plus size women. This I is for like all to, the plus size okay. women of America. Plus Take the stage. <laughs> Take the <laughs> stage. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Plus size women and men, for that matter. If you're confident, let me hear you make some noise. <laughs> okay. Now what I need, what I need is a clap. Just a little rhythm. Just give me a clap. Come on. Wait, wait. All rhythm. All rhythm. Come on now. Clap. Come on. Okay, guys. Here we go. A little slower, a little slower. All right. A little slower, a little slower. Okay. Dude, Bigger God. exceeds. Here's my proof. You've always liked them big ever since my youth. You got it going on, ladies. Believe that's true. It's ecstasy. The stripper coming straight at you. <laughs> See, confront me with facts. But lies don't sell me. Because I refuse to let somebody tell me who I should date and how she should look. Either stand for something or you fall for anything. Society will make a weak mind sink worrying about what another might think because... The girl is a quote unquote a size eight to each his own. I like meat on my plate, so just <laughs> slow down. I turned it in.
the scoop on your favorite stars before they hit it big, like Brad Pitt. He dressed like a chicken, and he also drove strippers around to bachelor parties. Sandra Bullock. This is a wig that she's wearing, and that's my dress. Bruce Willis. What was he like as a nine-year-old? A real short version of what you see today. <laughs> and more. And I said, Jean-Claude, can you please take it off? And he said no. The Hollywood <laughs> stars before they were famous on Rolanda. People may not know this, but if you come to New York City, and maybe there's some other places across the nation, you can actually go to clubs where you will find plus-size women. Now, these three, let's let me know <laughs> where they often go. There's a place called Large Encounters, another club called Goddesses, and another club called Big Beautiful People. And from what I hear, you can have a good time there and celebrate <coughs> big, beautiful women. Well, let me tell you this, a twist that I found in the audience here. I want you to meet Kai and Betty. Now, you talk about body types and how you're discriminated against. Good God, man! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You're a big guy. I mean, I can't imagine. And Betty, my God, y'all have got to do the big thing. Can you flex a little bit for... <laughs> Gosh! My God. You actually get discriminated. Here you are healthy. You obviously treat your bodies well. You are just, I mean, but you still have problems that you can relate to. Absolutely. You know, we talked a lot about, a lot today about, you know, acceptance of different people and their differences and our own uniqueness. However, at the same token, here's a flip or a twist to it. As an athlete, I am, I am a champion, not just as an athlete, but also in my life and how I approach my day-to-day -day things. Here's my training partner, Betty. And as we walk through the streets or do whatever in the summertime, you know, I find it that I wear a mark, um, my training partner included. You know, she can't even wear... Um, Betty, how do you walk? I bet, what do people say when you walk down the street? Because you've got, you are, you are built. Yes, Sophia Mays. Yeah. Yes. It's very but does the discrimination come because your body type is so much different? Yes, it's almost a curse. Really? Yes. Now, she's an athlete and a warrior in her own right. You know what I mean? What I do when I go to the gym and I train, you know, um, has a lot to do with um, using my mind and my spirit, mm -hmm. you know, um, to tr make a change on my body. Many people laugh and snicker, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But, no, and very, very few times are we accepted mm -hmm. um, as the champion or the athlete or the different person. Why did that lady snicker uniqueness? over there? Why did you snicker? Were you snickering? Uh, yes, Why were you snickering? About them. Oh, you, you were talking to girlfriend over yes, here. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> See, he's another talk boy. show going on over there. Okay, thank you. So, so there's still the discrimination. Emmy, you wanted to say something. What? I, I wanted to say that it's probably very hard for you to find clothes as athletes, because I know that when I was at Syracuse and I was rowing, a lot of us like had these muscles that mm -hmm. are incredible for women that you can't find any clothes for. Mm -hmm. Anyone in the plus size industry, you can only go to like Elizabeth at Liz Claiborne, which is awesome. They're a very, very good store. You can go to August Max. You can go to all these different clothing stores, but they're few and far between. That's and that says something a lot you think about our society. What if we have 35 million women who are size 14 and above? That's an amazing thing to leave out of the, the capitalism. What do you say? I think one thing that we need to discuss further today is the role that the media is playing love the fat and fin debate. The media tells us how we should look, what we should wear, and they sometimes truly define what it is that each person, how they should portray themselves, and you all of us don't fit into that category. You get a little depressed watching Baywatch. Well, yeah, and all of us aren't like that. I think yeah. if a person yeah. wants to uh, exercise to lose weight for the health benefit, but you know, I don't think a person should define their happiness by a number on a scale. And we oh, agree never. with you. And don't that is what the whole point is. You can't exactly. weigh yeah. happiness on a scale. Okay. I like that. Thank you so much for being with us today, folks. We'll see you next time on Rolanda. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I'm so glad you watched this episode of Rolanda, and there are plenty more to enjoy. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button. Want to know when the next one's going to drop? Hit the subscribe button. And follow me in social media at Rolanda Watts, and check out my website 
at Rolanda.com. You can also check out my podcast at RolandaOnDemand.com. Thanks so much for watching. Now go out there and do something good.